you guys, I'm at the UCSF Medical Library today. I'm here to do some research on iodine. A bunch of people have been asking, um, what is a safe multivitamin that doesn't have iodine in it, etc. And I thought before I go ahead and recommend something like that or do any looking into what's a safe multivitamin, let's take a step back. So I've been researching for months now to try to figure out whether iodine and acne are related. So let's go in and see if we can get a little bit better research and get to the bottom of this. Let's go. UCSF Medical Library doing some research on iodine today and this is really pretty frustrating I have to say I'm looking really deeply into whether or not iodine affects acne um, I've heard this from classes that I've taken um, and so I decided to do as much as much research as I could and the research goes back to 1945 um, is the earliest that I could find and believe it or not people were actually using iodine as a form of acne therapy at that time. And if you read the studies from 1945, it shows that um, supplementing with iodine can actually help with acne. Then when you get into the 70s, um, the medical community sort of changed their mind and decided that higher doses of iodine can cause acne, um, a particular form of acne. It's called acne form. Um, and it's spelled two ways, acne, F-O-R-M, or acne, I, F-O-R-M. Um, and then they extrapolate from there that um, higher levels of iodine may actually um, increase just regular acne vulgaris, the kind that we usually talk about here on acne.org. And this is kind of like one of those bandwagon things where um, once somebody in the medical community who's respected says that um, iodine and acne may be related, in every other study that you read from there on out, they start saying, yeah, acne and iodine are related, and um, sometimes they say it's very well known that they're related. But when you dig deeper, I'm not sure where they're coming up with this information, that acne and iodine are related. When I've been looking at these studies, some of them have, one of them has 19 people, one of them has 29 people, not in a big enough cohort to draw any conclusions. Um, they even talk about one or two people in some of these studies. Um, I came across this one, which I just actually started getting kind of angry about it. I just was like, horrible science. <laughs> um, and in this, um, in this study, they, there were 19 patients, first of all. The patients in this study were um, frequently washing their skin. They were putting on sulfur um, preparations. They were um, getting their comedones extracted um, sometimes, which can cause irritation, and they're also being treated with vitamin A. So talk about variables, tons of variables, and they found that a couple of these people tended to um, have some more problems with acne when they ingested more iodine, and from that, from these two people in the study, at the end of the study they say that it appears to be definitely established that some patients get enough iodides in their food to aggravate acne vulgaris, even though making honest attempts towards avoidance. I mean, ridiculous. I just put here, cannot draw this conclusion. So, I honestly don't really know where we are with this right now. Um, I'm kind of so upset about, about this that I'm questioning all the research that I've read that's out there. Um, I kind of want to use iodine as an example for what we need to do to figure out whether we can, can or cannot trust um, research. So I'm going to just look into this more and more and I'll get back to you guys. Um, right now I don't know if iodine um, and acne are related. I did read one study that was pretty cool um, that came in 2007 and this basically sums it up. Um, this is from Dartmouth. It's uh, Dr. Danby and he says, the definitive work needed to answer the question um, would be a blinded trial of a very high iodine diet in a teenaged or young adult's population. I suspect it would be a significant challenge to obtain ethical approval, let alone volunteers for such a study. So to do the definitive work on this iodine and acne connection, you would need to do a study that 
you might not be able to do ethically and you might not be able to get volunteers for. So what I would rather see people say in these studies is um, we don't know or evidence is pointing toward a certain conclusion but more evidence needs to be put forth instead of saying there's, like, there's definite conclusions that come from these studies. So um, we need to really be aware of the bias that these doctors have when they're performing studies and look into this stuff quite a bit. So I'll do it with iodine and we'll see what comes out of it. Um, so Kent's gonna ask me some questions, go ahead. Hey Dan. Hey. I have a question. So why was iodine initially associated with acne? Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure of all the history behind this, but I do know that doctors were finding that when they gave people very high doses of um, these uh, this substance called bromides, which is closely associated with iodides, um, that people were getting these acne form eruptions. And um, I should explain a little bit more what this acne form stuff is. It's not regular acne, acne vulgaris. It's a sudden onset of acne, and it's not age specific. Anybody can get it, no matter the age. Um, and it's also can be sort of randomly on the body. It doesn't have to be um, just where acne vulgaris usually is. Um, and then it usually goes away pretty quickly too. So they were seeing people with that, and it seems to me, from my initial research here, that they just extrapolated from that point and decided, well, if it's causing this acne form um, eruption, perhaps it aggravates acne vulgaris. Hey Dan. Yeah? What's an iodide? Well, an iodide is in iodine, and iodine occurs in a lot of medications. Um, it also occurs in our food system, definitely most notably in kelp. Um, kelp has an amazingly high amount of iodine, um, and the next, the next food down is like beef liver, which has maybe one-fourth of the amount of kelp. Hey Dan. Yeah. So, in your experience, have you ever experienced or seen a relationship between iodine and acne? I haven't. I, haven't. Um, I don't tend to eat a lot of kelp. I do eat um, Japanese food and I used to have um, seaweed salad quite a bit, um, which is by far the highest level of iodine um, that I could ingest in my diet and didn't notice anything. Um, so, no. So, should I avoid foods with iodine in them? I don't know. The short answer is I don't know. Um, I tend to think that you don't want to avoid iodine completely. Um, if, I, if I were to just sum up all this research, which I think is a little bit shoddy, quite frankly, <laughs> but if I were to sum up what I've read here, I would say that it's kind of an all things in moderation situation. You want to have enough iodine that your body can run well, but you don't want to have a massive amount of it, like with anything else, really. Another example of conflicting research that I read um, recently about iodine is there was one doctor who wrote into the Journal of the American Medical Association talking about how um, there's a lot of iodine in milk and that may be affecting acne. And his theory about that was that they dip the teats of a cow in an iodine solution to disinfect it before they milk it again and that that iodine could get into the milk. Um, and it was kind of one of those interesting things where you're like, oh, wow, there's so much iodine in milk. Um, and then there was another doctor who wrote back um, shortly thereafter and said, well, the actual amount of iodine in milk is pretty much the exact same amount that's in the breast milk of a woman. Um, and it's only one third of the recommended daily allowance um, of iodine in a healthy person's diet. So you'd have to drink three glasses of milk just to get the amount of iodine that you need um, to lead a healthy lifestyle. So um, if you read one per if you read one doctor's opinion, um, that can really throw you off track. You've got to take this stuff as a whole.